Why did productive people also seem so happy? And is there really a correlation? We're going to talk about that today and five simple habits that will make you happier and more productive. We're going to talk about that in today's podcast. Hey, Clutterbugs, welcome back to the Clutterbug podcast. I have pneumonia. I've been sick for over a week now. I'm ready for it to be done and over. I am on a bunch of medication. I'm definitely feeling better, but I want to kind of give you like, I'm I'm just letting you know in case my voice sounds funny or like, why does she sound like that? I've been really, really sick and I've been resting, which is awesome. Laying in bed, doing basically nothing but watching Bridgerton for the 17,000th time. I've read a bunch of books. I am so bored, friends, and honestly, not feeling overly happy. And I think this is so weird because as human beings, we always like, we want to go on vacation. We want to rest. We're like, oh, it's going to feel so good to just do the nothing. But what I hear over and over again is people who do the nothing on a regular basis are actually pretty miserable. And people who are actually accomplishing things and feeling like they're pushing the needle forward, which is what I call it, like getting stuff done, accomplishing, achieving goals are so much happier. Why is that? I personally think that a lot of this comes from pride. I think it's really hard to be happy when we're not feeling overly proud of ourselves, when we're not doing things that are making us feel good about ourselves. Obviously, it's hard to be happy. Doesn't matter how much money we have, we could be at a beach all day. If all we're doing is laying around and just like sunbathing, it doesn't take long before it's like, well, this doesn't feel fulfilling. This doesn't feel like enough. This doesn't feel like you know, I, I'm i doing things to make myself proud and therefore I'm not feeling happy. So I thought we would talk about some habits today, some things that in my own life that I've changed and I've definitely witnessed in other people because I'm not, I'm not doing it all great. I got to say that, but in comparison to how I was living my life before, there is a night and day difference. I still have a lot of room to grow, but I did want to talk about things that are helping me, little habits that I do that are helping, and also habits that I've noticed that other really happy and productive people are doing. But first, I read this this comment on Reddit, and I loved it so hard I want to share it with you. It says, I've been staying with my cousin this week, and I cannot fathom how she manages to get so much done. She's running her own business, working over 40 hours a week, Plus, she teaches yoga. She's raising two kids, plus two dogs and a cat. She has hundreds of houseplants. While also hiking every weekend, she plays several instruments. She plays volleyball. She occasionally tutors English. And she's in the process of writing a book. Her house is clean. And... She doesn't look like she's rushing around. I've been here over a week. She doesn't seem stressed at all. Actually, she seems pretty relaxed and spends a lot of time sitting and watching TV, yet still manages so much. I asked her for tips, but she doesn't seem to think she does anything special or has special strategies. What the heck is going on? It's like some people just have more hours in their day. And I read this and I was like, wow. What's so crazy is I used to feel this way about a lot of people in my life. I looked at people who, first of all, had their house clean or could manage to like do all these things, work and take care of their house or work and take care of kids and have a clean house and do hobbies and go out with friends. Like what? How are you, how are you doing this? How are you managing to get all of this done? And I'm over here struggling to find time to shower. Yet I feel like I did stuff all day. I don't feel like the entire day was just laying around doing nothing. 
was I lazy? Am I lazy? Well, I'm not working hard enough. Like, what is the secret here? And what I realized is there really are some secrets. And it isn't that you're not working as hard. That is not the secret. You don't have to work harder at all. But there are definitely like, I would say five really simple habits that make an absolutely life-changing difference. And some of these aren't even habits as much as like mindset shifts, but um, let's jump in and start talking about them. And while you're listening to this, I really want you to take action on something in your house today. I want you while you're listening this to make yourself proud because when you're proud and you've accomplished something, you'll be happier. So clean out the fridge, do some dusting, do some vacuuming, catch up on those dishes, declutter something, make your life easier, do something that's going to make you proud while you're also listening to this podcast and hopefully learning about some really simple habits, some of which you might be doing, but some of which you may be surprised that you're not. And they're really easy things that you can start implementing into your day that will have a really big impact. Okay. So the first thing is, how do some people seem to be doing so much <laughs> and and also be relaxed and and not feel like they're working all the time? Yeah. Okay. They're doing this one thing, which is they are setting goals. They are. And not only do they always have a big goal, but the most productive, happy people that I know have like a big goal, like a year goal, a month goal, a week goal, and a daily goal. Like they think of their life in little projects or achievements, and they're always having one of those things that they're working towards, or multiple, usually multiple things that they're working towards. And it doesn't mean that they're working 24-7 on it. That's not what I'm talking about. But they actually have a goal post. Like they have something that they're working towards. Because if you don't know where you're going, how the heck are you going to be motivated to get there? Like if you don't have a clear vision for the things that you want to achieve every year, every month, every week, and every day, you're just going to be spinning your top and spinning in circles. And a goal is different than a wish. So a wish would be like, I want to lose weight. I want to get in shape. I want to get a clean house. I want to declutter and get organized. That's a wish because it's not really giving yourself a, a, a goal post. What does that even look like? And how do you know when you've achieved it? A goal would be, I want every cabinet in my kitchen organized by Easter. I want to declutter my closet by the end of April. I want to go through my clothes and let go and donate all the clothes I'm not using by the end of April. Today, my goal is to spend 15 minutes decluttering my t-shirts. That's a goal. It's very different than this wishy-washy pie in the sky thing. And I think it's a huge difference between people who are productive and happy and actually getting things done and seeming like from the outside, you're like, how are they doing all this amazing stuff? Um, it isn't that they're working on these things 24 seven. It's that they actually have a plan for their life. They've taken time to write down actual goals. Have you done that? And for a really long time, I thought I was doing that. I was like, yeah, I got goals. I got big goals, man. I got big dreams. I want to make a lot of money. I want to have a good job. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to have a car. I want to like be in shape. I want to someday own my own business. This is all pie in the sky, wishy-washy things. That's what I've learned. Like those were not those were not real goals because I wasn't giving myself a deadline and I wasn't giving myself actionable steps. So I how could I possibly every day 
do little things to work towards those goals when I didn't even know the path. I hadn't, I hadn't made a path for myself. So goal planning, number one, simple habit that you can do. It's literally just a piece of paper and write down a year goal, a month goal, a week goal, and a day, like a, like a day goal. Work out for 10 minutes a day before dinner. That's like, that's, or after dinner or in the morning, whatevs. I don't know. You do you, bro. Work out every other day for half an hour. Work out three times a week. Work out Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for 30 minutes going for a walk while listening to an audiobook at four o'clock. Man, that is a goal that is like, it is, it is, it's got a pin in it and you're, you're, you're in it to win it, man. That's a, that's a crazy goal. Um, Okay. So, and I've talked about this before, but every time I've had a discussion with somebody who I really admire and I'm like, wow, you get so much done and your life seems so incredible and I want to know your secrets. This is the secret that I hear over and over and over and over again, except they don't even realize that they're doing it. It's just something that either they've picked up in a self-help book or it's been a learned behavior from their parents or it's something that they just innately have always done. And for those of us that we don't think, our brains don't think like this, it it can be like, we don't even know what we don't even know. We didn't even know we were missing this huge key thing in our life. And so often we have goals in our younger years. I'm rambling, but listen, I'm just going to say it. So we have goals in our younger years. It's like we're going to graduate and or we're going to get a job. We're going to get married and we're going to have kids. We're going to buy a house. We're going to buy a car. And then it kind of stops because there isn't another big thing that's like this traditional society is telling us this is a goalpost that we want to make coming up. And we don't think to create our own new goalposts. So we kind of get it stuck in this limbo after we've achieved these life goals that apparently you're supposed to. So we end up waking up, you know, we're 35 or 40 years old and we're looking around, we're like, we're not actually feeling fulfilled or overly happy or overly accomplished. And yet we have all the things in life we're supposed to have wanted and to be the end goal what the heck is happening? It's because as human beings, we we're, we always want to strive for better and more. That's just human nature. So keep creating new goalposts for yourself. All right. That's, that's habit number one. Habit number two, this is probably the one thing that made the biggest impact in my life. And that is writing a daily to-do list. And again, when we talk about the first thing, when we talk about like, we think about our daily goals, we think about that when we're writing our daily to-do list. Like, what are you accomplishing today? Think of your life in projects. What project are you doing today? Like you have a to-do list and that's great, but think of it as like, like a, like a, I think of my to-do list anyways, is like little projects that I'm going to do. So record a podcast, film a video. Um, I just wallpapered the bathroom yesterday. Uh, making dinner, I don't even put on my daily to-do list because to me, that isn't a big project. That's just something I do. I got to feed my family. It's just something that gets done. So it's not even something that makes it to the daily to-do list because I don't want to have decision fatigue and I don't want to overwhelm my list. I really want to have that one key goal of something that I want to accomplish in that day. And if I don't, that's okay. I can hopefully get it done the next day or get some some small piece of that done. But I got to have a vision for my day. If I don't, I'm just going to do the nothing and I do do the nothing. Like I I could squirrel syndrome all day. I could I could busy myself making little make work projects and never get things done. I could just go off on a little tithy and fill my day with God only knows what and be exhausted and feel like I worked all day and yet not really accomplish 
anything. So that daily to-do list, but thinking in my brain of like mini projects kind of life or my mini goal for that day and writing that down, super key, super key, which leads me to number three, which is another simple habit that you can do that will change your life is learning to prioritize your daily list. Prioritize. This is something I'm not so great at that I got to learn, but everybody that I talk to who's like winning at life and I'm like, look at you, why are you doing all these incredible things? And and it's like, what? what's your secret, friend? Mm-hmm. They prioritize and they let the stuff that's less, even though things might be urgent, if it's not as important as other things, they they let that stuff go. And they're like, nope, this is the thing that's going to give me the biggest bang for my buck. This is the thing that's going to have the most importance to me and is going to make me the happiest when it's done. This is the thing I'm making sure I do today. So every day I write myself a to-do list and sometimes I pie in the sky and it's like 10 things and I'm like, I'm going to do all these things. I always circle the most important, always. So I get my little scrap piece of paper or my notepads. I have them all over the house. Sometimes I write multiple to-dos for myself, but always I circle the most important. It helps me focus. It helps remind me of what's really important. And what's important for you might not be what's important for me. And some days what's important is different than what was important yesterday. Today, super important to tidy up the house because it was feeling like a hot mess. Most of the time, that's not a huge priority for me. It's like other projects like wallpapering the bathroom. That's the thing that's like feels like top priority for me that day. But it doesn't matter. It can change from day to day. The act of prioritizing and circling the thing that's really important is so key. Because oftentimes the important stuff may be stuff we don't really want to do and it falls through the cracks. We forget about it, like maybe paying the bills or returning those things to Amazon or calling the person and wishing them a happy birthday because they gave birth to you and they're your mother and it's their birthday, but you forgot to call because you didn't write it down and you didn't make it a priority. Okay. Is this making sense? Hope you're kicking butt. I hope you're not stopping to write things down. I hope you're kicking butt on your house because we can do all this, uh, this prioritizing daily to-dos goal planning after. Right now, we're taking action and we're making life better. You're doing something that's going to make you super proud. Are you ready for number four? This is my favorite simple habit that will make you happy and change your life. It's my favorite because I'm kind of lazy. And that is take shortcuts. Take all the shortcuts, friends. Really productive, happy people Don't waste a lot of time on the details that don't matter. I have learned this over the years, and this has been such a mindset shift for me. I've always been a person who's like kind of lazy and didn't want to do things the hard way, but I also really beat myself up when I took shortcuts and thought like, I wasn't really doing things the right way because I wasn't doing the way I'm supposed to or the way everybody else is supposed to do. An example would be like cleaning. I don't even own a bucket and mop. So when I mop my floors, I don't do it the old school way, but my mom says the only way to really clean floors is on your hands and knees with a rag. My my mother-in-law says the same thing. I grew up with like, that's how you clean floors. And here I am. I don't even own a mop, let alone do it on my hands and knees. I do not do it on my hands and knees. I use like this little cheater spray mop thing. And yet my floors are always clean. So why are we doing things the hard way? Like they're, 
there's ways that you can take shortcuts and get basically the exact same results. So why wouldn't you? And the most productive, happiest people are the people who are allowing themselves to cheat and take shortcuts and not do everything 100% perfectly all the time. So let's talk about some of the things that are really, really, really time-consuming, really time-consuming, and are eating up a lot of your day, and some little shortcuts that you can take to make those things easier. For me, one of the most time-consuming things is cooking. It really is. Now, if you love cooking and you love making things from scratch and this is like a hobby for you and it's something you take a lot of pride in, don't shortcut that. That That's your jam, man. Do that. But if you're like me and you're cooking because you got to eat and you have a family that you have to feed, it's okay to sometimes take shortcuts in cooking because it's going to save you a lot of time and get you the same results. So I grew up in a family where dinners were like a multi-course type thing. So we would have meat and potatoes and a vegetable and bread and butter. And sometimes we would have a salad with that. And it was a production. Dinner was a production. So when I became a mom, we would eat like... I dinner would be like I'm making a roast on a Tuesday with mashed potatoes and corn and probably a salad and I better get some dinner rolls and it would take forever to make and it'd be a ton of dishes and my kids would pick like two things and be like me you know and my my husband would eat it and we would eat it and we would appreciate it But also, is it that big of a difference to just have soup and sandwiches? Not really. And what I learned is I really got to save those big meals for the weekends and special occasions and treat my kitchen more like a diner, especially because we're busy and we have kids. And also, it's okay. It's okay to have grilled cheese and soup for dinner. It's okay to have it multiple times a week. It's okay to have a salad for dinner with some chicken on it. It's okay for us to have fend for yourself night where it's just like, okay, dinner tonight is whatever you find. You want to have a bowl of cereal? That's okay. It's not every night. It's sometimes, and that's okay. And this was such a mindset shift for me that really resulted in I'm happier My family, believe it or not, is happier because we've taken the pressure off. We still eat together as a family, but it isn't like a huge restaurant production, which means cleanup is faster, which means there's less dishes, which means I have more time in my day. Everyone, we all have more time in our day and we're saving money too. Like, whoa, honestly, crazy pants. So shortcutting dinners, taking shortcuts, maybe there's like one night a week you even just eat off paper plates. Who the frick cares? Taking shortcuts when it comes to cooking. The next most time-consuming thing is stuff shuffling. If you have a cluttered house, you are spending a ridiculous amount of time just looking for stuff and moving stuff around whether it's moving stuff because you have to clean so you're tidying, moving stuff because you actually need to move stuff so you can use your surface, like you can't even eat at your table because there's stuff, you got to move the stuff off the table first. Just stuff shuffling, man. This is, I spent so long like picking up kids' toys off the floor so I could vacuum or picking up dirty clothes all over the place or picking up trash or just, oh my gosh, picking up, picking up stuff. Man, I spent hours a day doing hours a day. Now I hardly spend any time, minutes, minutes a day. There is no stuff shuffling. So how do you do that? This is like the ultimate shortcut. You literally throw a bunch of stuff out. You declutter. 
you you once you declutter, you create simple homes for things. So it's really easy to put things away. And then you set multiple timers a day to remind you to tidy, to train you and your family to get in the habit of putting things away when you're done with them. But the biggest shortcut here is the decluttering aspect. Way less toys for your kids mean way less picking up toys. Less clothes mean less picking up and having to do laundry. Less stuff is less stuff shuffling, period. The ultimate shortcut. You really want to have more time and feel happier and be more productive, have less stuff. Honest to goodness. And I say this all the time, but like I I can't I can't not say it. It's the ultimate life hack. It will make your life so much easier. It will make you so much happier. It will give you so much more time. Please, please, friends, please just just fill a trash bag and then fill another one tomorrow and fill a donation box and keep doing it. Keep doing it till you look around and think, wow, what am I actually going to do? Because there's nothing to be done. My house looks tidy and it feels tidy and I have time. And oh my gosh, like what? There's nothing to do. What am I going to do? And that's so, it's so crazy to me. Like when I made that transition and I just repeatedly and consistently decluttered and got to a point where I would look around and I no longer had to escape my mess into TV or social media or leaving to go shopping because when I was home, it was just like everywhere I looked, there was something to do and it was so stressful. I just wanted to escape my home. When I didn't have to do that anymore and I looked around and instead felt like, oh, things look good. What am I going to do? The possibilities are endless. I was so bored. I didn't want to escape into TV or social media. I wanted to do something that made me proud, whether it was a craft or, I don't know, read a book. Like I actually was motivated to do cool stuff when my house felt under control. It was crazy pants. Okay, so another huge, time-consuming, sucky thing that you can take a shortcut on is grocery shopping and like just shopping in general. Man, you could kill two and a half hours going to Costco, plus the time it is to put things away when you come back. But grocery shopping, and I used to grocery shop multiple times a week (laughs) because I would forget things and have to run back out and get more things. Or I would just be like, want to escape the crap in my house. So I would go grocery shopping as something to do or go shopping or run errands. I'm like, well, my son needs rubber boots. Might as well go to Walmart. And it would be this whole production. And I'd come back with a bunch of stuff I didn't need, which was added to the clutter. And then I had to find spots for all that stuff to go and put it all away. And it was a whole, like you could spend literally hours in a day shopping, and then coming back with your purchases and putting those purchases away. Crazy time suck, honestly. So shopping online, scheduling an online pickup. So going like instead of going to the grocery store, you go online and you add things just that you need, and then you schedule a time to go pick that up and have them come and bring the groceries to your car. Definitely grocery shopping, like where you write a list and you only go grocery shopping one day a week. And that's the day where you pick up those things and you're not running out for a million other things multiple times a week. This is such a huge shortcut. And you're going to save money and you're going to have less stuff in your house. So limiting the amount of times you go to a store is an incredibly huge shortcut. You don't need to go to Target. (laughs) You know, there's nothing there you need. Nope, there isn't. You're fine. Don't go. Stay home. Save the time. Just trust me, friends. This, when I finally like stopped going to out shopping multiple times a week, 
I gained so many hours back. Plus I gained money back. Plus I had less stuff. Like there was so many benefits. I just had to say like enough is enough. I'm only allowed to go shopping once a week. And it's to the grocery store. End stop. This changed my freaking life. Honestly, it really, really did. And I don't come home with a bunch of crap I don't need. I did. My husband and I got a Costco membership again. And every time I go, I regret it. But we were getting some kids snacks. They have Uncrustables there. There's no other place we can get those. My kids love Uncrustables. So like twice a month, we might venture to the Costco together and we try to keep strong for each other. And yet we went to Costco a couple of days ago and I left with over a hundred dollars worth of bulbs, like garden bulbs, like a bunch of different kinds of plants to plant in the spring, over $100 in bulbs that I now have to plant. And I didn't need bulbs or want bulbs, or even think about them. But I saw them at the end cap at Costco, and I came home with them. Completely unnecessary. So I got to take my own medicine because guess what? I can order online at Costco and I can get those Uncrustables delivered for free to my door. And I don't need to put myself through the whole rigmarole and come home with crap that I don't need. I'm going to take my own advice and I'm going to start doing that. So the last simple habit that you can do to be happier and more productive, it isn't that really secret. It's something we all know, yet very few of us actually do, and that is daily consistency. So a little bit every day. And so when we think about the person, the cousin at the beginning, right, who is doing all these things, like how does she manage to get all this stuff done and still look relaxed and not be stressed or have this like hustle mentality? How is she doing all these activities? She's consistent. She's doing a little bit every day. She's probably exercising a little bit every day, maybe 10, 15 minutes or every other day for a half an hour. She's practicing these instruments a little bit every day. It isn't like we think, especially like when we think about having a clean house and we think about someone who has an organized home and everything's decluttered. It's like, well, they must be working 24-7. I cannot tell you how many friends and families come to my home and they say, oh man, you must work constantly to clean your house. And I'm over here like, what? I can't even remember the last time I cleaned my house. Like, what are you talking about? Because it doesn't feel like work because I'm only doing it in little five, 10 minute chunks a few times a day. It doesn't feel like work or effort because I'm not spending a lot of time at all. And in fact, I'm spending so little time sprinkled throughout the day on it, but I'm consistently doing it that now it's become a routine and a habit. So most of the time, I don't even realize I'm doing it at all. It's like i it's not even a conscious thought. It isn't a conscious effort. So it's being done on autopilot, so I don't even realize I'm doing it. So when somebody says, you must clean all the time, my first thought is, I never clean. And yet, I have a house that's always clean and tidy. How is that possible? It's consistency. Consistency. And I look at my husband and I really want to run 5K <laughs> so bad, so bad, friends. It's like this goal and I want to train for this firefighter stuff. And I have been, I went on a run with my husband and he wasn't even breaking a sweat and I'm dying. Now, in my defense, I did have pneumonia and didn't realize it. But even if I didn't, I'd still be dying because my lungs are so out of shape. And he is like... This is not a big deal. But I remember when he was learning to run, he was every day doing seven to 10 minutes of running. 
just every day. He would do this little tiny bit and he didn't feel like he was working out because he was working out for like 10 minutes. But he was very consistent doing a little bit every day. Now that guy can run 5K without even breaking a sweat. It's no big deal for him because he was consistent. He did a little bit every day. And and I look at him and think, oh my gosh, I could never achieve that. Well, that's not true. I can do 10 minutes a day and so can you. And you can tidy for 10 minutes and you can declutter for 10 minutes and you can practice an instrument for 10 minutes. And all these little 10 minutes of working towards this bigger goal that we have for ourselves or doing these daily little projects that we've written down for ourselves and we've prioritized, it's the daily consistency that's going to bring it all home and really add up to life changingness without us feeling like we're working all the time without us having to do things in these big chunks that feel like work. Most people who struggle with a messy house, a cluttered house, are spending so much time cleaning on the weekends. They are going gangbusters on the weekend or every other week. And they're working so, so, so hard. But if they just did a little bit every day and they were consistent with it and they forced themselves to get up and do a little bit in these little consistent chunks, they'd be so far there ahead and yet they'd feel like they were doing so much less. That is the secret to life. Little tiny bits of productivity every single day making yourself get up and do it and being consistent. That, 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 that's the real secret to life. It really is. And I got to take my own advice here because I have not been consistent with the things that I haven't been successful at. That is the honest truth. Like I'm working on this book and I'm like, why am I not getting it done? Because when I wrote I wrote four books. And do you know how I did those? Every day I had an alarm set and I would write for 15 minutes. And then before I knew it, like literally in less than two months, I had written a book because I had written for 15 minutes a day. I was consistent. I made myself write for 15 minutes a day. Now I'm over here like, why can't I get my book done? Am I writing for 15 minutes a day? No, I'm waiting till I feel motivated to write, which will never happen. I will never write another book if I don't make myself write for 15 minutes a day. I can do anything for 15 minutes a day. Why am I not successful at working out? Why am I not running 5K? Because I'm not being consistent and practicing for 10 minutes a day. I'm just not, I'm not doing it. I'm trying to run like once every couple weeks, run like 5K all at once. Like that's, ridiculous. And then I fail and then I feel exhausted and I'm like, and then I wait weeks again to try again. What? I know this isn't how you achieve goals. I know this is not how you change your life. I know this is not how you get amazing, cool things done. I know it's in little tiny 10 minute chunks that you do every day. I know this. And yet, why am I not doing it? let's make a pact to each other that we are going to pick one thing that we're going to be consistent on this week. One thing that we're going to do or two things that we're going to do for just 10 minutes a day. Write it down, make it a priority, and let's set an alarm and a reminder in our phone every day for the next seven days. And let's commit to each other that we are going to do this we can make miracles happen. And I know, and you know, we know we only have to force ourselves to do it for a little bit, two weeks, 
We have to force ourselves to be consistent every day for those 10 minutes. And it's going to feel, those 10 minutes will feel like an eternity and we won't want to do it. But if we make ourselves and then we make ourselves again tomorrow and we make ourselves again the next day, by the end of the two weeks, we'll no longer have to feel like we're forcing ourselves. And by the end of the month, by the end of 30 days, we're going to be doing these things for 10 minutes without even realizing it. It'll be an unconscious habit. And we will be happier and more productive for it. Okay. Friends, thank you for spending time with me. I hope you got something done today and you're feeling like a boss and you're feeling like a baddie and you're proud of yourself because you deserve it. And I will see you back here in one week and I will let you know how I'm doing with my daily 10 minute run. That's my goal. That's what I'm working towards. I got to run. I'm going to run every day for just 10 minutes, friends. And I don't know what you're going to be working on, but I'll meet you back here in seven days and let's see how we did. I'll see you guys then.